Hello everyone, my name is Vic of US Market Biz and for today I'm going to continue discussing about Initiative QSO. In my first two videos, I discussed um, joining Initiative Q, sign up and verification, obtaining queues, and the Q payment network. And in this video, I'm going to discuss behind Initiative Q, queues versus crypto. Okay, so before I do that, I just want to uh, repeat what is Initiative Q. So, Initiative Q is building the payment system of the future. The Q payment network will integrate the best technological improvements that have been made in the payment industry over the last few decades to create a flexible, easy to use, and inexpensive payment network. These technologies have been available for years but have not been adopted due to a classic chicken and egg barrier. No buyer wants to join a new network with no sellers and no seller will offer a payment option that no buyer uses. So Initiative Q solves the adoption problem by associating the payment network with the new global currency and distributing this currency to early adopters for free. Okay, so that is what Initiative Q means. So, okay, so let's go to Behind Initiative Q. So who is Behind Initiative Q? So Initiative Q was founded by Sar Wilf, a serial entrepreneur who started his first payment startup in 1997 and later founded Fraud Sciences, which re redefined the payment security space and was acquired by PayPal in 2008. The Initiative Q team comprises top experts in payment systems, macroeconomics, and internet technologies. The idea behind Initiative Q is to first create a critical mass of users, which can be harnessed to create the world's best payment network. Therefore, currently our our primary focus is to get millions of Q members registered, after which we will recruit the world's top professionals in space. So what is the Monetary Committee? A global currency should not be controlled by one private company. Therefore, an independent Monetary Committee will be appointed via voting by all members and stakeholders in the Q payment network. The committee will only issue new coins for the purpose of maintaining stability and increasing adoption similar to how the world's largest currencies are managed. The alternative, having a fixed supply of queues like Bitcoin or similarly simplistic monetary policy, will not work in the real world. Stability of purchasing power is crucial to success and it can only happen through intelligent analysis of economic activity and customer behavior. So who are the queue agents? So Initiative Q will focus on the technology, standards and regulation of the payment system while delegating the financial operation to hundreds of local agents. These local agents will be responsible for customer service, safeguarding members' funds, connecting local stores, legal compliance, and settling with other agents. Agents compete with each other to manage member accounts, who's, uh, who are the buyers and sellers, and receive a small fee of transactions they process. Together, they enable the Q payment network to be truly a global system with local branches providing individualized support and access. So how many queues are there? Who holds them? So two, 2 trillion queues will be issued to be distributed as follows. 80% are expected to be distributed as incentives to encourage user activity and promote network, network growth. Around half of the incentives are reserved for buyers and the rest for sellers, agents, contributors. And the incentivized growth supporting activities with the within the Q network. So 10% are assigned to the Initiative Q payment company for the purpose of funding development of the world's most advanced payment network. And 10% are assigned to the Q monetary committee, monetary reserves. This will be gradually converted to other currencies and financial assets allowing any Q member to easily convert to other currencies if needed. Monetary committee members will be compensated according to industry standards once the initial 2 million queues are fully distributed, the monetary committee may create and distribute new queues in order to keep money supply in line with economic activity and to maintain stability as outlined at the economic level. So now that is that this concept is out, what prevents a hundred new initiative queues like that person from popping up? 
So for a new payment network to succeed, it must reach wide-scale adoption. Buyers should see many sellers supporting this payment option and sellers should see many buyers requesting it. If the market fragments into many networks, this is much less likely to happen and everyone loses. The competing networks, the buyers and the sellers. It is therefore a high priority for Initiative Q to deter copycats and at least during the initial growth phase. So this includes number one, exclusivity incentives. Initiative Q will provide incentives for sellers who commit to using the Q payment network exclusively. Legal. Number two, core um, components of Initiative Q model are patent pending. Number three, trade secrets. Initiative Q have several tools to accelerate growth, which will be rolled out in the future. To keep the competitive advantage, these will be exposed only when necessary. And number four, rapid growth. Most importantly, the faster the Q payment network grows, the harder it will be for the newcomer to catch up. Here, you can help. Get more of your friends on board and increase your increase both your rewards and the likelihood of the Q payment network success. Okay, so to be clear, while a unified network is required for success, competition is important to drive progress and innovation. The Q payment network is therefore designed as an open network of the independent operators who compete on, con on connecting connecting buyers and sellers to the network. Okay. So Qs versus crypto. So how is this different different from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? So cryptocurrency is a brilliant solution for, to the pro, to a problem that doesn't exist. Cryptocurrency is digital money that is hard to count or fate. While the mathematical foundation is ingenious, an immutable money ledger is far from being a major theme today. Our money is already digital in the form of bank computer records, and no one is worried worried that these records will suddenly disappear. This is due to a robust system of trust and governance that protects individuals from such risks. So while many dislike the complex system, it works reasonably well, well and there is still no better alternative. In fact, the anti-counterfeiting measures that cryptocurrencies offer create an array of much worse problems. So number one, transferring security risk to the currency owners. Removing banks from the system also removes the protection that banks provide in security, fraud pre prevention, and dispute resolution, leaving individuals vulnerable to theft, scams, and human errors. To protect themselves, cryptocurrency users are expected to undertake complicated security procedures such as generating cryptographic keys using dice, entering them into an unused laptop that is later destroyed, storing the keys using special hardware from multiple manufacturers, and keeping paper backups in bank safes. Comparing that to credit cards which allow consumers to make payments using just a few encrypted numbers while being fully protected from losses underlines how far cryptocurrencies are from becoming the currency of the future. So unstable value. So a basic requirement for a currency is stability and predictability in purchasing power. This requires a carefully managed monetary policy that matches the money supply to current economic growth. Cryptocurrencies have either no monetary policy or an overlay simplistic one. As a result, their value fluctuates rapidly, rendering them unhelpful for purchases and trade, with all activity driven instead of speculation. Number three, legal controls. Whether we like it or not, governments still hold ultimate power and they insist on regulating currency transfers, financial transactions, investments, and their underlying mechanisms. Any currency that attempts to circumvent such regulations, including most cryptocurrencies, will face an uphill battle with, to wide-scale adoption. Reversibility, so this is number four. So no matter how good a system is, if humans are involved, there will be mistakes and misunderstandings. Allowing transactions to be reversed benefits both buyers and sellers in the long term, as customers can engage in the market more confidently. Of course, reversing a transaction should be allowed only for certain reasons, something that can only be determined by human beings following procedures. This goes against the decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies making wide-scale adoption difficult. Okay, so waste. Bitcoin's energy consumption is equivalent to that of 6 million households and emits 90, mi 90 million kilograms of carbon dioxide. 
every day. Worse, all that energy is spent to support just two transactions per second, a far cry from the thousands of transactions per second on the credit card network. So Initiative Q's main goal is to achieve global adoption. Initiative Q therefore prioritizes ease of use, stability, security, efficiency, legality over abstract goals like decentralization. This is a real-world solution for real-world problems. It is based on a network of Q agents who employ thousands of people, conform to local regulations, and ensure that members receive quality customer service and are fully protected from thefts and scams without requiring them to become security experts. However, some of the concepts behind cryptocurrency are valuable and may be deployed in Initiative Q's back end for settlement between Q agents where these disadvantages become neg negligible. Okay? So is this an ICO? No. ICO or initial coin offering is a term used in the cryptocurrency world to describe the public sale of newly issued coins. Initiative Q's goal is to become the standard in payments and to create a global currency that requires adoption by hundreds of millions of members, which will not happen if they will require to pay. Q's will therefore be distributed for free. So how is this different from an airdrop? So airdrop is, term, is a term used in the cryptocurrency world to describe free distribution of coins, while Initiative Q will distribute free cryptocurrency that by itself is not enough to revolutionize payments. It can only succeed in synergy and two other actions. So number one, requiring members to undertake simple tasks to qualify for the rewards. These are tasks that promote wide-scale adoption for Q for the benefit of all members. Number two, development of a state of the art payment system. The eventual success of Q is based on its being the safest, easiest, and cheapest, or cheapest way to trade. The free distribution of coins is only interesting in so much as it promotes the adoption of advanced payment technologies. And additionally, Initiative Q is not a cryptocurrency, which allows it to avoid the many shortcomings of cryptocurrencies. Okay, so those are um, my, my topic today behind Initiative Q and Qs versus crypto. So as you can see, the difference between Qs and crypto, right? So guys... I think that's it and and check uh, initiative Q and see the description so that you can have the registration link all right so this is Vic um, once again thank you and bye, -bye.